matter in an experiment in this lab here. So uh, anyway, so it's not just limited to the galactic scale actually early in the th in 1930 or so 1933 this Swiss American astronomer Frank Zwicky was actually the first to conclude as uh, to come to the conclusion of the presence of dark matter and deconiated the name dunkel materia dark matter from observations of actually galaxies in a cluster of galaxies this is a picture of a famous cluster, the coma cluster, and Zwicky in 1930 was studying the same thing, the velocity now of the of the of each galaxy in this cluster. And the observations that he made were, were led him to conclude that what he saw could not be explained by just the, the dust and the gas and the visible stuff that he was measuring. There must have been a large fraction of dark matter to keep all these galaxies together and now we are talking of a galaxy cluster so the presence of dark matter is quite clear in the from the studies of this uh, galaxy cluster such as the coma um, it would be nice to see can we see the presence more directly of dark matter and the the only thing that is really um, telling us or we visually can show us the presence of dark matter is the phenomenon phenomenon of gravitational lensing as predicted by Einstein in his general relativity uh, theory. So uh, the lensing is is a consequence of the fact that the gravitational field of a galaxy with all its dark matter, this gravitational field or pool, uh, uh, deflects the light. The, the mass or the dark matter in a galaxy deflects the light and the more mass there is the, the more the deflection so in the picture here sorry on the right you see the, the observation of lensing if you're observing on earth uh, an object in the universe in this case this quasar the light which comes from this quasar to your telescope to your eye is going to be bent by the presence of this lens which is in this case a galaxy with all its dark matter so you will not observe the direct light rays which come directly sorry from the quasar but you will observe actually uh, a, a, a multiple image of the same object quasar and since we are in a 3D space it's actually not just one image but this uh, a, a whole these images lie on a cone and the projection of a cone is a circle so you expect the so-called Einstein circle as and and the, the circle will be perfect only if the lens and your telescope are in the same line which is not always the case therefore typically what you observe like in these uh, pictures on the left the effect of gravitational lensing is uh, pieces of a circle or arcs of a circle the blue the light blue pictures are this distorted multiple image of the lens object and the yellowish stuff is the galaxies which are producing the lensing effect and uh, most importantly i mean in the next picture is that from these studies of lensing of of uh, galaxies of objects uh, you can infer actually the amount of dark matter which must be present in order to give you that lensing effect and the number that comes from lensing observation is of course very consistent with the number which you can infer from the uh, the rotation curves of galaxies or the uh, rotation of galaxies in a cluster so we know dark matter is there that's the bottom line i will finish with this we know is there and i hope i convinced you a little bit that we know it very precisely and we know it through its gravitational effects which are responsible just for us even to be here but the question that remains and our challenge is what is it made of and before going too far into this we have i can say that we know very well we know for sure that dark matter is nothing like the particles of the standard model of physics we can go through that table that i showed you before look at one by one there is not one particle in the standard model which can fit the bill for being the dark matter and we know very precisely also the amount of variance of matter normal matter that we have in the universe so it's nothing like a standard model particle 
we are looking for something new, we are probably looking for a new type of particle uh, which has yet to be found and the most popular idea, there are many ideas as I mentioned already, there is a zoo, a zoo of candidates, many models but let's say the most popular idea is dark matter is a new type of particle which interacts only very weakly so that's why we give it the name of a WIMP a weakly interacting massive particle <laughs> and it's a pretty picture <laughs> And with these wimps, this particle from which come stream from the hail of this galaxy in which we are, there are billions of them going through you, through me, to everything, just like neutrinos. They're very actually similar. They're weakly interacting. Um, neutrino would be a great candidate, but they're just too not massive enough. The mass of the neutrino is well, I mean, we, is one of the big uh, uh, story that Michael alluded before, but anyway, neutrinos are not it. And so from the amount of dark matter, which I told you already before in the halo of this galaxy, we, c we know that there are billions of them going through us every second. The problem is that only a few of them hit a nucleus in our body, in your finger, in our body, in a ear, and the fact that we don't take you or me as a nice detector to look for dark matter is that there is not much signals that we can get out of this body. We need to find a more appropriate matter to detect this dark matter. So only a few interaction in a hundred kilogram a standard body per year. So it gives you an idea of how rare this phenomenon